Hi everyone, welcome back to the room where our clothes currently live. I thought I would do a wardrobe video for you guys today and actually it's a viewer suggestion. Comes from one of you, lovely lot. One of you emailed me over the Christmas period and just provided such like fascinating and helpful feedback when it comes to my capture wardrobe content and I found it so interesting. I've literally got my phone out because I made notes and I just found it really reassuring and I feel like this person put into words like something that I couldn't put into words. I feel like you know me better than I know myself, you know? They basically said, I do have a capture wardrobe of sorts. I have things in my wardrobe that I've had for years and years and years and have really stood the test of time. But sort of what I was showing you guys was more of an organizing those pieces and then also doing more of a seasonal refresh, you know, like I'm normal, I'm human, I buy into trends occasionally. And sort of the difference between like a minimalist and a realist, like I do buy things that maybe I shouldn't. I don't wanna have to wash my clothing all the time, but I do have these capsule wardrobe staples that I invested in years back and still today are things that I go back to time and time again and they're really like the basics, like the true core of my wardrobe. So this person suggested a video where I share with you those pieces. I share with you why I purchased them in the first place and why they're still hanging around in my wardrobe and how they've lasted, how I styled them perhaps a couple of years ago compared to how I style them now. And it was just a really thoughtful and well put response. So thank you very much. This person knows who they are. I went back and was like, this is fascinating. Thank you so much for the feedback. Okay, let's talk tops first. And I feel like there's a very obvious category here, the equipment silk shirts. They are not cheap. A few of these I think I bought in the sale. I think one or two of these I bought in the sale, so they were slightly cheaper than normal. But I'm gonna talk you through three in particular. One of them is the pajama style shirt. Oh, I love this silk shirt. I've had this in my wardrobe since 2017 and I just think it's really chic. Like I love that whole pajama wear as normal wear kind of thing. And this was like the original piece that started that off for me. Um, I still think today it's just a really nice, chic, smart piece of clothing like this with some straight leg jeans, with some black trousers if I ever needed to look fancy ever again, would definitely be something that I would wear. So I still really, really love this shirt. I also picked up a striped one. Um, this, I think I got this one in the sale. I think the other ones I have in a medium, they're a slightly more like fitted fit on me, but this one I picked up in a large. I just wanted it to be really oversized, really comfortable, like I could wear it quite open at the neck with some necklaces underneath like this and a red lip and like a chunky gold chain I feel is a very festive, <laughs> festive look for me is, is about as festive as I get. So that I picked up in 2018 I think and then another 2017 purchase, so we're talking like four years old in the wardrobe is this, again from equipment, it's a blue tie-dye shirt. Again, I've got this in the medium. I'm so proud of this shirt because how big was tie-dye like last year and the year before? It really had its moment, it was there. Everything that was tie-dye was like sold out on the high street. And I had this, I was like, oh, I've had this for four years. I knew that trend was coming. Um, I really, really love this shirt. Um, I like it worn most with blue jeans. I think it looks cool with blue jeans, but I also love it with like a cream jean. It's a very summery top for me. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm proud of myself for having the foresight that uh, tie-dye was gonna be a thing. <laughs> okay, let's cast our minds back. 2016, Mark and I had just moved in to our flat. And that's when I really started to like be bitten by the capture wardrobe bug. That was when I was like, right, okay, I'm doing this. I'm getting back to basics. I'm gonna invest in these basics and they're gonna last me years. One purchase that I made that was so, so good, super happy that I did were these. Um, again, from equipment, I really had an equipment phase, um, which is strange because kind of since that phase, I haven't purchased anything from equipment for years. Um, but I really saw these, I can't remember who swore by them. There was like a fashion editor that swore by them and I was like, I wanna swear by them too. <laughs> so I picked up one in gray, um, these I think called the Salone Cashmere Crewnecks. I'm not sure they actually sell these exact ones anymore, but I'm sure they do a similar one and just any kind of thin cashmere crew neck, um, I just think is such 
a staple. So I've got one in gray and then I've got one in black. I've given these a once over with my cashmere comb like a couple of times throughout the years, but they're still fluffy, they're still soft, um, they still kind of feel brand new in a way. Um, I would say it's interesting because I definitely go for more of an oversized fit on the top half these days, but I find myself reaching for these when I'm wearing something like my totem kind of slightly baggier, like they're still tailored, but they definitely have more of an oversized fit to them. So if I have more of an oversized fit on the bottom half, even like these leather trousers with something a little bit tighter on the top, I reach for one of these and yeah, I'm really happy I picked these up. I mean, I know they were super, super pricey, but it's five years later and they just look fab. There's no holes in them. Right, the chunky knits. So once I'd realized I'd got my thin knits down, I really had a chunky knit phase in 2017. These were all purchased in 2017, aside from one. There's like one exception to the rule here, but oh my word, this weekend was so expensive. And it was one of those things, I remember buying it and I think I bought it kind of out of season because at the time it was a really hard jumper to get your hands on. Whenever I wanted to buy it in the winter, it was always sold out. So I think it was in like the summer and I saw it in stock and I bought it. And then I was so terrified of it because I don't think I'd ever bought a jumper that was this expensive. I sort of like folded it up and put it to the back of my wardrobe and tried to forget about it. I felt a bit embarrassed about the whole thing, if I'm honest, just because I was like, I can't believe I've spent that amount on a chunky knit but however four years later I'm here and it's really lovely it's it's very thick and it's kind of quite a non-squishy fabric that is definitely not the technical way of putting it but it's not stiff that's the wrong way to put it because it is soft um but it definitely has a fit to it and it kind of contains that fit on your body and for that reason I think this one looks better when it's untucked when you're just letting it be big and baggy when I tuck it in I feel like it juts out at the front honestly I would I would wear it in this outfit I think it would look really cool actually these are the Zara cream leather trousers in case you're wondering I love them the Demi Lee jumper um, I picked this up when I was in New York one time with Lily I picked it up from a place called Bird in Brooklyn it is such a cool clothing shop I actually have a black Demi Lee cardigan that I bought there when we were in New York obviously not this New Year's but last New Year's and I love that as well I really really love this brand it's just hard to get in the UK this one is great because it's it's not cropped like I'm not really a cropped kind of gal when it comes to tops but it is a little bit shorter in the body so it makes it really easy to look like you've tucked it in and that's why I absolutely love it I love this with like black leather trousers jeans I mean this is just a gray chunky knit it's so easy to wear I still reach for it a load it's not scratchy it's nice and soft I bought a Cezanne cream chunky knit back in 2017 and I love Loved it, you'll see it all over my Instagram. I absolutely adored that jumper. And then one day I shrunk it and we're talking like real Barbie shrink. We're talking, it was, it was like taking it out and it was like this. I was so <laughs> devastated and so annoyed at myself. I really learned my lesson. I haven't done it since. So I think I purchased this maybe like two years later, 2019, to replace it. It was kind of the replacement that was on their website. It's like a Y design, chunky knit. Um, I really, really like the neckline on this. It's kind of a bit boat necky, I guess. Just really flattering. And I like this one if I've got my hair up or I've got my hair in like a low bun or something. I think this looks really nice. Again, nice and soft, not itchy. I don't like get super overheated in this. Oh, I just really like it. Okay, top's done. Now on to trousers and skirts. The Realization Pa Naomi Wild Things midi skirt. So I do also have the short version. It's very short. <laughs> it's very, very short. I'm here for a short skirt. I love a short skirt but I do think the midi skirt is a little bit more versatile in my wardrobe and you guys know that I like whip it up schoolgirl style and make it into a shorter skirt anyway. So I feel like if I was going on holiday, there'd be no need to take both. I could just take this and I kind of get a short skirt and a midi skirt out of it. And I can adapt the length depending on how I feel and how much of my leg I've shaved. <laughs> what my bikini line's looking like. <laughs> I can't find an exact date that this was added to my wardrobe, but I have a feeling it was either 2017 or 2018 
whenever Realization Part allowed shipping to the UK, like I bought this, I was obsessed with this skirt. Everyone I love the style of had this skirt. It was all in my Instagram saved section. I was obsessed and I'm so pleased I bought it. Again, not the cheapest thing in the world. I mean, that's a bit of a theme running through all of these. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but then they have lasted really well. I wear this in a small, Whereas in a lot of Realization Par clothing, I tend to be more of a medium, but I'd say the waistband on this is really forgiving. I'm definitely more of a medium than a small. I could write a love letter to it, quite honestly. <laughs> okay, let's talk about leather trousers. I love leather trousers, <laughs> can you tell? I have to say these have been a really good inclusion to my wardrobe and I've got quite a lot of wear out of them just because all of my other bottom half options are either denim or black or kind of a cream jean. It's nice when I don't wanna wear jeans. I just get these out, but these are a newer purchase and these aren't. These are from And Other Stories. To the best of my knowledge, they still sell this exact pair, like this exact fit, this exact cut, so I will link it down below for you. I have them in a 38. I have a feeling I'm kind of a 38, 40 in bottom halves in And Other Stories, but I think I got both of them and this just fitted better on me. So maybe it's a slightly oversized fit. I've loved leather trousers for a long time. If we're talking like pre-2017, they were more of a leather look legging. <laughs> That's really hard to say. <laughs> really tight, like American apparel disco pants kind of style, like sprayed on Sandy from Greece. Then in 2017, I purchased a pair from Mango. So similar to this pair, more of like a straight leg, like a denim -y style fit, but in leather. I searched high and low for those trousers. They were always out of stock. Eventually picked them up. So happy to have them, wore them a ton. Remember sitting at the train station, crouched down and I just heard, you know when you hear it, you're like, oh gosh, I really hope that's not in the bum. It wasn't, but it was a rip across one of the knees. It just was in a place that would have been really, really hard to like patch up or repair. So I ended up picking these as a replacement and I'm actually really happy with these. I feel like these are a much better replacement because they've got a lining inside, whereas those ones from Mango didn't. They were just like a, a leather, so the leather sat on your legs, which these do have too, but from the knee down. So until the knee, they're lined and it just feels so much more comfortable, like a proper trouser. Obviously, you've got that extra layer of warmth in there as well. And I just feel like the fit of these, oh, the fit of these is so darn flattering. One more inclusion in this category, and I picked these up in 2018, the redone high rise <laughs> stove pipe jeans. I have these in a couple of washes, but these are the first ones that I picked up. And in my eyes, they are the best ones that I picked up. I love the wash of them. I love the fit of them. I love the cut of them. They are a raw hem on the bottom, which I really like every now and again. I just give them a little trim. They start getting a bit, unruly. I don't have to wash them that often because they get, but well, they do get baggy. They get like more comfortable, like with any jeans, when you wash them and you first put them on, you're like. <gasps> <laughs> then after a couple of wears, they stretch out the waistband a bit, but I don't find that they get baggy around the knees like a lot of my other jeans do. So these were super pricey. I had never purchased a pair of jeans for this amount <laughs> when I bought these. They're just really well made. And I feel like when you find a fit of denim that fits you and your body shape really well you're just like okay cool like I found it it's taken many years but now these are the ones I actually have a bit of a shocker for you here I have something which I don't think you will be expecting but I have a dress I purchased this in 2017 and you probably haven't even seen it all that much if you're a more recent viewer of mine you definitely wouldn't have seen it it's a Ghani gorgeous flower print dress I originally purchased this because I was in, I think I was in New York with Lily. I don't know what the hell we were doing there. We were having a great time. <laughs> and I knew I had this really quite fancy like soiree to go to where I couldn't just rock up in jeans. So I remember purchasing this and just thinking, this is a really good dress to have. And this is basically the sisterhood of the traveling pants in my friendship group. I think the majority of my girlfriends have worn this <laughs> at some point. It's like, oh, Anna, can I have the Gaddy dress? I'm like, oh yeah, sure, here you go. It gets like lent out. It's so great for any type of occasion in a way. And because it is ultimately a black dress with this orange print on it, which is just gorgeous, it works in more like wintry times as well. Like I know you would be really chilly in this. You don't wanna be outside in it for long, that's for sure. But I feel like it's not just 
a summer piece like this with like a leather jacket over your shoulders would also look really cool but I've worn it to weddings I've had friends wear it to christenings parties Hindus and just anything just anything so this is my oh my word I'm going somewhere where I really need to wear something fancy I wear this it's got a really nice wrap front so it's just very comfortable to wear and it's got a little slit as well so you end up doing like a little bit of an Angie leg moment but yeah probably not something you expected to see in this but just a dress that I think that I will have for a really 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 long time in my wardrobe because whenever you need to be fancy this is my go-to we're still going we've got coats we've got shoes left but coats I am very excited about I'm going to share with you the oldest piece in my wardrobe it was purchased in 2014 it's from and other stories it was when and other stories first opened in the UK and it's this beaut I feel like because of this I'm always asked where you can get a leather jacket with like gold or brass hardware and I'm always looking out for you guys because it's really hard to find previous to this I had a leather jacket that I'd purchased from Primark as a student and it had this sort of muted brassy hardware on it and I I wore I literally wore this Primark leather jacket till it was falling apart it had like multiple armholes in it because the lining was just so ruined it obviously wasn't proper leather it was like a plastic coated thing and so it was all worn off on the elbows on the sleeves I loved that jacket but when I saw this I was like I think it's time for a replacement and I'm just so happy I picked it up because I don't think to this day I have seen a leather jacket that I prefer over this one it's really simple it hasn't got like zips or pockets like all over it. it's just got two simple pockets here a gold zip these little poppers back here um, and the leather I mean it looks brand new um, yeah I just love having a leather jacket in my wardrobe I know these days it's kind of not as trendy as it once was I definitely don't wear it as much now as I used to when I first picked it up but I, I just I like I wouldn't get rid of this I'm like mm -mm, no no this is the best leather jacket I've ever seen I'm holding on to it one thing that I picked up in 2016 so I mean this has put some serious work in in my wardrobe is this black pea coat from whistles um just such a simple piece it originally came with like a blue faux fur collar I got rid of that I never wore that I like it just how it is without it um but again it's just it's just simple it's an absolute classic a pea coat is something you can wear in your wardrobe for years it's like a heavy wool so it keeps me nice and warm it's like lined inside it's got slightly contrasted buttons the buttons are almost a tortoise shell navy which I just think is a really nice detail um but yeah I just love this coat I would say I think it's a 10 yeah it is when I put this on I'm like oh I think a 12 would uh have a have a bit more <laughs> space in it these days I feel like I've like broadened out in my shoulders slightly um but I still love it I still wear it it's just such a nice piece I actually saw a photo um on my Instagram the other day I was like scrolling through trying to find all of these and it was a photo of this with a leather trouser and then just like a cool pair of trainers um with a big black tote bag from years back maybe five years ago and I was like definitely going to recreate that outfit <laughs> a slightly more recent purchase is this from whistles I think whistles coats are amazing I love whistles coats I picked this up in 2018 after years at like honestly years of trying to find a faux fur leopard print coat that didn't make me feel like the Michelin man still had Pat Butcher vibes <laughs> and was the right kind of leopard print as well I can't describe it I'm very particular with my leopard print I don't want it too yellow too orange I don't want it to be too small too big this is just this is everything I remember seeing Ingrid Nilsson wearing it and I was like where's that from clicked on it it was whistles I was like right that coat is mine I'm so happy with it I actually have it in a small um it's just a very big oversized coat anyway um and yeah whenever I put it on I, I just love it so much and it makes me so happy <laughs> finally we have shoes and the majority of these were purchased in 2017 I was obviously having a good shoe year in 2017 I really invested in some of the basics and I'm really happy with all of them still so these bad boys are four years old in my wardrobe they are the Gucci horse bit leather loafers 
very, very, very much influenced. This, this was obviously the time that I discovered like Lizzie and Lindsay. I mean, like Lizzie in particular literally lived in these, like did testing basics where these won like every time. It was a big leather loafer moment for like fashion bloggers and I fully <laughs> invested in that. With these, I, every now and again, I get super tempted to sell these just because I'm like, oh, I could raise a lot of money for charity and I feel like I'm not giving them the best home but I always went out of it because number one, I've worn them in. So they are very comfortable for me to wear. And number two, they're just a very good, throw them on and have like a whole day up in London. And I know I haven't got like completely ruined feet by the end of it. And they're just a nice, I, I don't really own any, well, I don't, I don't own any other loafers. So I'm really happy that I've always held on to these. I feel like they will have their moment again in my wardrobe, obviously for this year and like last year, they just haven't really had the need to wear these. I've been wearing much more like comfortable, kind of less formal looks, but they've lasted really well. I got them resold when I first bought them because they were like walking around on an ice rink. <laughs> and I highly recommend doing that if you ever pick these up. Okay, another Lizzie inspired <laughs> purchase, the Dear Francis Spirit Boots. I mean, oh my word, again, whoa, Jesus, these are expensive. <laughs> but they are currently the only like high black boot that I own and I love them. I would say I purchased these thinking they were a good kind of everyday boot for me. And they're like a little bit too high for that. Like if I had an office job, if I was on my feet all day, I wouldn't be wearing these. These are just a little bit too much for me these days. Something like my Gani Cali boot is like as high as I can get. There's there's maybe like a centimeter and a half difference in it, but it's enough for me to notice. I think the thing I love most about these, number one, they've worn really, really well. I've worn these a ton and the leather is soft and buttery and really unblemished, which is incredible. I love the detailing, the gold zip. Oh, gold hardware, I absolutely love it. Again, quite difficult to find. The gold zip with the little like white enamel detail on it, like I just think it's absolute perfection. Whoa, these need a clean. But my Vans old school trainers, um, I think I bought these in New York with Lily. I think she bullied me into buying them and thank you Lily for bullying me into buying them because I mean, like they're just a really simple trainer. Like I'm not a trainer head, I'm not a sneaker head. I have these, I have my really quite dirty APL trainers that I just throw on like whenever I'm leaving the house in a rush and that's it. I own two pairs of trainers. I don't need any more, um, but I just think these are really simple and whenever I put them on, I think they're quite a chic trainer. I think they go with everything. And again, I've worn them in, so they're really, really comfortable to wear. And I think they do clean up really well. Like these definitely need a clean, but they look pretty newish like once I've done that. Oh man, these are really, <laughs> these are real dirty. But hey, it shows that I'm using them. I think I was gifted these actually from And Other Stories in 2019. I have a feeling it was like the spring of 2019. I can't really remember, but I really felt like this whole chunky boot thing was way too cool for school for me. Like I was not cool enough to be part of that crew. Um, but I ended up picking these and I'm so pleased I did. I mean, they are like, sorry, they're really, really muddy. We went on a dirty track the other day and I need to give these a good clean. Um, I just love this chunky boot style and I 100% would invest in more of these. I would say the quality of these boots isn't the best, but that's probably due to me not giving them the right TLC because the leather is cracked a little bit. And you know, sometimes the lining inside can kind of pull away. Um, you know what I mean? Like that's that's the inside. It makes getting my right foot off kind of hard, but it's fine, I can live with it. Um, and sometimes it's good not to crazy invest in a style if you're not sure it's gonna work for you. Um, I would 100% pick up maybe the Dear Francis pair, like they look amazing. But actually, I really like the shape of these. I find them really comfortable, um, hence why I haven't done that yet, because I'm like, I'm kind of happy with these. Um, if I just give them a really nice clean, I'm sure they will look brand new. But these have fast become my everyday boot during the winter and I never thought that would happen. I love when that happens, so there you go. Good old chunky boots. I think they'll be in my wardrobe for a long time to come. Wow, I really feel like I had a lot to say there about my favorites, but thank you so much to the viewer who emailed me and gave me this idea and hopefully it has helped you guys, informed you guys in some way. I will link what I can in the description box. If I can find any dupes, of course, I will pop those in as well, so definitely check out that. But thank you so much for watching. 
What is the thing in your wardrobe that you're super happy you purchased, is really long standing, like is your version of the And Other Stories leather jacket? I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back with a little day in my favourites slash vlog situation next weekend. See you then, bye.